Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? You know, in classical mythology, hubris, H-U-B-R-I-S, is a fatal flaw that inevitably leads to tragedy. No matter how admired the hero, any mortal who dares to believe like a god is punished in the end. Mankind never seems to learn this lesson for some reason. The elites of every generation delude themselves into believing that they are superhuman and inherently different from those they consider beneath them. You know, us useless eaters. They are not. Whatever afflicts ordinary people will eventually come for those who build these extravagant sanctuaries intended to rival Mount Olympus. No elite ideology has caused as much suffering as communism for a simple reason. It is a false doctrine that failed, that feeds on, on hubris. Communism begins where atheism begins, Marx wrote. It permits elites to de defy themselves because of that delusion. It remains a specter that still haunts the world. Wherever Marxism is reared its ugly head, it ultimately brings death and desolation. Wherever communist elites believe that they can rule over a land of peasants, you know, us, while remaining safe and secure behind castle walls. Those barriers eventually prove as fragile as any Potemkin village constructed from empty promises and outright lies. No matter how many hundreds of millions of lives socialism and communism have destroyed, Western elites remain enamored of Marxism. Any system that eliminates private property for all but the aristocratic few cultivates a slavish devotion to the state is attractive to arrogant human beings who believe it is their birthright to control others. The specter of communism haunting the world today comes in the form of the WEF's Great Reset or the UN's planned technocratic tyranny. It exists wherever one group of experts believe it has the moral prerogative to tell everyone else how to live, what to do. Like, take for example, Lenin. He argued that both medicine is the keystone of the arc of socialism and that the establishment of a central bank is 90% of communizing a nation. Together, central banks and global health authorities are the gateway drugs for communism. In every iteration of Marxist hubris, the promise is framed a little differently. However, it is formulated. It always brings tragedy. Marxist socialism, communism, planned sustainability, new world order, glo global government, whatever it is called, it remains rule by the elite. Any system that refuses to protect individual, individual freedoms and empowers a small coalition of authorities to control everyone else should simply be called elitism. The distinction between political parties becomes meaningless when elites learn, as Lenin did, that the best way to control the opposition is to lead it. Forget Republicans versus Democrats. Forget it. The real contest is between regular people and the privilege hoarding elites who maintain a stranglehold over the government. This kind of thinking is denigrated dangerous populism. How dare the great majority of the people form opinions that reject the preferences of the ruling class? Is it not strange that the Western elites speak fondly about the virtues of democracy only when the people under their thumb, 
do exactly what they say? Not really. The democratic revolution is the necessary preparation for the socialist revolution. And that's with Mao Zedong thought, taught. And the socialist revolution is the inevitable sequel to the democratic revolution. The ultimate aim for which all communists strive is to bring about a socialist and communist society. In other words, tyranny is most effective when citizens actually vote for their chains, when the people think for themselves and reject the elitism, that requires their submission. Then the state dispels any pretense of caring about what the people think. Now, modern democracy in the West is a bastardization of medieval feudalism in which serfs labor under the delusion that they actually voted to be the vassals of the state from time to time, especially when unworthy lords have caused widespread misery. Then the serfs begin to remember that it is they who are rightly lords over their own lives and that the state is meant to be in submission to their will and their authority. And when elites decry populism, they are really ringing alarm bells for other elites to hear. It is the surest sign that for the ruling class fear that the people have begun to wake up from their slumber only to discover their own imprisonment. That is when all hell breaks loose and any army of 100,000 IRS agents is mustered into, to intimidate citizens. The illusion of impartial justice is dropped so that the state can quickly lock up its political enemies. The regulatory bureaucracy fines and punishes anyone not towing the government's ever moving statutory line. Freedoms are taken away, speech, self-defense, due process, and the theft of those freedoms is blamed on who? Us, the victims. When tyranny begins to choke a country, the innocent are presumed guilty until proven otherwise. You can be certain that the specter of communism is spreading when the elites stop pretending to be bound by any rule of law and instead project their own power by resorting to open threats of violence. All political power comes from the barrel of a gun. The Communist Party must command all the guns that way. No guns can ever be used to command the party. In America, the Second Amendment guarantees ordinary citizens political power. Gun control has never been about saving lives or preserving public safety. It has always been about controlling lives and preserving the ruling class's safety. A well-armed populace is capable of protecting its own liberties. A well-armed state is concerned only with protecting its own power. It may not seem like it right now, but none of this will end well for the elites. I promise you that. A great number of historians and political theorists have formulated expansive arguments that attempt to explain the collapse of the governing systems. It is mathematician and physicist Isaac Newton's third law of motion that remains closest to the mark for every action. There is an equal and opposite reaction. The Marxist globalists pushing the WEF's Great Reset on the West think that they can play gods, destroying food and fuel supplies, eliminating private property, expanding evasive surveillance, devaluing physical money, mandating digital currencies, and even supplanting mankind with artificial life. They simultaneously spread an irrational fear around the world by promising a cure in return for all of humanity's obedience. What these false gods unleash upon the world, however, will find its way back to their doors. Hungry, impoverished, desperate people will have no trouble knowing exactly where the blame lies for a planet plagued by chaos. The coming lesson for the people to their tormentors will be very simple. You reap what you sow.
keep in mind this truth. At no time in history have the people forcing others into compliance been anything other than the eventual perpetrators of unspeakable truths. Elitism in, in Marxist, socialist, great reset or any other form always unleashes colossal tragedy as so many tales from ancient Greek mythology make plain though. There has never been a sanctuary safe enough for elites to hide from the consequences of their own deadly hubris. And I leave you with that. I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? You stay safe, you stay positive, you keep prepping. And as always, fear less. Ciao.